And may I say, I am sick and tired of hearing my opponent run down the President of the United States and his administration. Oh, I know. I know. After he hits him below the belt, he says, oh, I didn't do it. I didn't mean Eisenhower. I meant Nixon. To show how desperate, to show how desperate and despicable this campaign has become, they're handing outside defense plans a poster which says, Jack Kennedy is after your job. I'm after Mr. Eisenhower's job. And that little boy manner he has, very innocent, he said, he said, you know, if I'm elected president, I'll consult, I'll consult with President Eisenhower about how to stop this slump. He'll have a chance to consult with Eisenhower, but he'll be a senator of the United States and not president of the United States. That's the story. He tells us now that he's the man to stand up to Khrushchev, even though I can't persuade him to come into a studio and engage in the fifth debate and stand up to the American people. I do not believe that we can afford to use the White House as a training school to give a man experience at the expense of the American people. Now, if we can just send him back to California for four more years and study up, we're going to make a good public servant out of him. He shows an ignorance economically which disqualifies him from even being considered as President of the United States. The Vice President of the United States says that he will go to Eastern Europe if he wins this election. I will go to Washington, D.C. Congress has made possible direct TV debate by presidential candidates for the first time. And Chicago will be the scene of the first great debate. I just, I just want to see if there's a right turn please, In the studio, producer Don Hewitt prepares for the arrival of Nixon and Kennedy. Representatives of the candidates inspect and approve each detail of preparation, down to the shade of gray in the painting of the set. Vice President Nixon is the first to arrive. He has campaigned right through this morning and paused only this afternoon for solitary rest without staff or entourage in a hotel room. Now he listens while the rules of TV debate are explained. I think you just both should stand here. All right? Right. Good. Excellent. Oh, and incidentally, I, I, yes, I think what he, Howard will actually say is the first question now to Senator Kennedy, uh, you may not want to get up till he's finished. Then once you've got up to comment on it, then you're up for the rest of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. And Howard will hit the gavel if somebody... Uh, Ignored. What does the cut, uh, the cut means, uh, that's it? Get out, Grace. Five seconds. Uh... Right? No, well, what I mean is you want to quit quickly, or uh, how, yes. how, how, how well, much? we figure when you see 30 seconds, then try to make it. Right, and then the cut is, that's yeah. it. And then right. Howard will give you a few seconds over the cut, and then bang, yeah, bang. Sure, sure. Well, right. we'll, uh, we'll uh, 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 Come on. Stay right there, Mr. Come on. Get the whole Looking right at the camera here. Do that again. Take care. Take care again, Candy. Look this way, please. Well, you had a big crowd in Cleveland. Vice President. Uh, with the uh, with the wind. The wind. Okay. Well, you can get your hands up. All right. All right. One more. One more. One more. Thank you. Okay. Now. Are you leaving me? Anybody else? No, I leave it the. Uh, first thing in the morning. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Vice President, Mr. Candy, would you mind looking around here a second? Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
All across the land, parents shush children. It's 8.30, September 26th. And as millions bend forward to see the next president, they hear... Oh, the genius do pure magic for you. Spiral brush, colors, curls, waterproofs. Really separates lashes. New magic mascara. Good evening. The television and radio stations of the United States and their affiliated stations are proud to provide facilities for a discussion of issues in the current political campaign by the two major candidates for the presidency. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. In this, the first discussion in the city... The audience for this debate is almost too huge to measure. This is the first of four. Researchers will claim each debate caught the attention of almost 70 million Americans. Mr. Smith, Mr. Nixon. In the election of 1860, Abraham Lincoln said the question was whether this nation could exist half slave or half free. In the election of 1960 and with the world around us, the question is whether the world will exist half slave or half free. The subject of this debate is domestic affairs. Kennedy has spent a relaxing day at the Ambassador East Hotel with his brain trusters, preparing as if for a college exam. Kennedy directs himself not so much to Nixon as to the unseen audiences of the nation. Nixon, however, in debater style, addresses himself chiefly to Kennedy. Smith, Senator Kennedy, the things that Senator Kennedy has said, many of us can agree with. There is no question but that we cannot discuss our internal affairs in the United States. The Nixon campaign has stressed his superior maturity and experience. But face to face, the two men seem evenly matched. With this debate, the Nixon claim is shaken. Moreover, ill at ease, under strain, dressed in a suit of gray that blends into the background, Nixon in this first debate leaves a disappointing image in the minds of millions of Americans. For years, men will argue who won or lost the debate. But political analysts will agree that these TV debates were the most important single episode of the campaign. I've been asked by the candidates to thank the American networks and the affiliated stations for providing time and facilities for... Overnight, TV has given Kennedy star quality. Public response soars. He said, I am tired of reading in the paper what Mr. Khrushchev is doing. I am tired of reading in the paper what Mr. Castro is doing. He says, I want to be able to read in the paper what the President of the United States is doing. <laughs> well, just let me say this. If he had stopped talking and started reading, he'd find out what President Eisenhower is doing. I don't care how many rescue squads they send to help Dick Nixon travel around the United States. I don't care if Cabot Lodge and Nelson Rockefeller and Barry Goldwater all prop him up and push him forward. And I don't care if they add Dewey, Landon, and Hoover to advise them how to win. The point of the matter is a team doesn't run for the presidency. One man runs for president, one man runs for vice president, and the country makes its decision. The president of the United States, Mr. Eisenhower, dragged him in twice, but they're not going to drag him in a third time. They say, repudiate Eisenhower. And may I say, I am sick and tired of hearing my opponent run down the president of the United States and his administration. In that little boy manner he has, very innocent, he said, he said, you know, if I'm elected president, I'll consult, I'll consult with President Eisenhower about how to stop this slump. He'll have a chance to consult with Eisenhower, but he'll be a senator of the United States and not president of the United States. I am sick and tired of hearing my opponent run down the president of the United States and his administration.